Fanning. Weekends on 2FM. Now, as we all know, independent music venues are seriously struggling at the moment, but their importance is paramount to the survival of a vibrant live music industry. A new documentary film from the organisers of Independent Venue Week in the UK called On The Road shows us just how important independent venues are to musicians, crew and fans alike. The film features interviews with the likes of Pink Floyd's Nick Mason, Idols, Fatboy Slim and Nadine Shah, amongst others, and was filmed over the course of two years at several well-known independent music venues throughout the UK. At the centre of it all is Radiohead drummer Philip Selway who takes us on a journey to the heart of these independent venues and their communities and he's on the line now to chat about how important these venues have been, not only to Radiohead but probably every music fan he knows. So Philip, welcome to the programme, or I'll call you Phil actually which is one, the one the name I've always known you by and before, <laughs> the, before the band were signed Phil, is it fair to say that Radiohead were, and I mean this in the best possible way, believe me, when I think about the amount of times I've seen one, you were just a pub band we weren't even that to be honest with you dave yeah. um we, we we barely played any gigs and the shows that we had played was in a they were in a small venue in oxford called uh, the jericho tavern but even as kind of like this nascent band in, in oxford um very inexperienced actually having a venue like the jericho tavern there in oxford meant so much to us because we were there playing in this venue where bands kind of you know that we had records of they actually played there and it kind of gave you that belief, yeah, maybe we can do this. Maybe we can make the next step. And in, in, in going there, not as a Radiohead person or even a, on a Friday, which is what you were called a one stage person, but I mean, going there and just seeing bands live, was there any aspect of being right up so close and seeing what they could do? And you thought, I'm into music too, you know, well, maybe I could do this. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's that the um, kind of, the physical immediacy of it yeah. as well. It's, 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 it does make everything feel far more um, doable, really. Um, and also it's kind of the community that you get around the gigs as well. I think as a band, that's really important because you see other people from, from your town doing things like, you know, being involved in the kind of promoting and the sound and, and all of that. Um, and actually you can see that there's actually kind of a, a, a path there to follow um and so yes i mean that has been been incredibly important and that's really i mean going uh, around on the road trip that i did for on the road mm. it was that just came back to me time and time again how important that opportunity is to have there on your doorstep when you were there say in the jericho pub or in in, in the in the jericho tavern in oxford were there songs that you were playing at that time even that would have arrived eventually on the pablo honey first radiohead album um some of the later shows yeah i mean the um the first demo the, the well the demo that we did to get signed which became the first ep um mm. trilogy so songs like you treat yeah. yourself uh, such a long time ago now I forgot what else was on that one um, so yes I mean the, the the songs were there they were they, you know we were plugging away but actually then we needed to be able to to go out and actually perform beyond there you know oh, yeah but, but I mean I'm sure like it was probably family friends and local other musicians and other bands at first and then did it quickly become the A&R man type of place uh, yeah it did I mean we had uh, I remember thinking back to, to the summer of 1991, and that's when we decided to actually kind of really throw our weight behind, seeing what we could do with the band. And actually things happened very quickly for us at the time. As you say, it's friends and family who come along. Yeah. And then within a couple of months, suddenly- Record we, companies, yeah. And, yeah, uh, you know. Yeah, well then, like yeah. people know about the rungs up the ladder, and if you, if I say like the Jericho Tavern might have been the first, when you went to the Zodiac in Oxford, did it feel like a step up? I mean, can you remember the day you filmed the, the video for Creep there in 1992? Uh, yes, I can. Um, yes, it did. I mean, that that was uh, again. That's as you say, it's the step up the ladder, and I think that that whole kind of ladder of all the venues um, that you can play at, each one you look at. It's, it's the next stage and being able to see the bands that you, you're you really into play on those stages, it kind of, it inspires you. Yeah. It, it enables you to think what you need to do to make the next step. 
And you know, the funny thing is that while Britpop was happening in this part of the world, you were all over in America missing the whole thing because Creep became a big hit and it was on heavy rotation all the time and everywhere you went, you saw a little damn piece of the Zodiac in Oxford all over America, which is brilliant. <laughs> Never thought of it like that, Dave, but you're right. <laughs> yeah, well, so let's take a look then. What about small independent venues outside of Oxford, like Moles in Bath or even the 930 Club in Washington? I mean, what independent venues are your personal favourites from over the years that aren't in your hometown of Oxford? Well, when I was uh, on the, the road trip for um, for the film, I was able to go back to, to quite a few of them, actually. So, you know, these venues have all got this this kind of kind of like folklore around them. You know, it, it, so many amazing shows have happened in these places. They've been so instrumental in yeah. making um, fans' um, careers. Radio have had done some very intimate gigs over the years, but for the vast majority of them, you, you, you know, you are playing the huge arenas or the major festivals or whatever. Do you miss the days when you could see the whole crowd and watch the expressions on punters' faces as you, play, as you play their favourite tracks? I mean, like, like, if you think about it, you know, you were there in the place of the Jericho and you'd see Dinosaur Jr., you'd see Pulp almost before they started. Do you, do, do, do you want an audience to get that in some ways? Absolutely. I mean, there, there's... I mean, it's quite a scary um, context to play in because, you know, you, you can read absolutely everybody's expression. Yeah. Uh, and it is a, is a wonderful thing because if everybody's lost in the music, then then that, that's a great feeling. <laughs> but, you know, th there is a lot a lot of scrutiny as a band in that context as well. And that's really healthy, I think. You know, it's kind of, I, for us, it was such a good uh, way to learn learn our craft because you know you know that if you can actually pull it off in in those venues then then actually it might translate to to a, a larger stage and of course the new documentary shows how 17 years later a, a, a by then stadium filling radiohead had to abandon your attempts to play this rough trade record shop gig nearly 1500 people turned up so it just gets too big and the people behind these venues the owners the crews the sound engineers they're really all just music crazy aren't they i mean it's definitely a community built around a mutual love for the craft isn't it absolutely i mean it really is for the love of the craft because i mean it's um it's not a big earner for people um, but you just you just realise what a commitment it is for for the promoters and and everybody there really it's um, you know everybody's doing like multitasking to to the nth degree, but there's just this kind of warmth this enthusiasm that you you you're greeted with. Um, Do you know? Hold on, I, I want to put a name into this. I want to know the feeling you get from this. There's a guy called Paul Jackson who who who, who does the New Adelphi in Hull. And Absolutely. he did it when you were there. And 35 years later, you go back, having conquered the world and played the biggest things around the world all the time. And he's still there running it after all these years. What's the feeling when you walk back into that venue? <laughs> it was a time walk feel because, I mean, the venue hasn't changed and Paul hadn't changed either. And I spoke to um, Fatboy Slim there mm. as well. And um, it, it, it was seeing the same thing on his, his face, actually. It's just kind of, it's really keying in to that, that kind of sense of excitement that you had when you were first starting out to, to, to tour and, and get, play in venues outside your hometown and to people that you didn't know. Yeah, and also just you realise and appreciate now just how much goodwill and creativity and love of music goes into these kind of places. So, the, well, by the way, we're talking to Phil Selway here on the road. Uh, the independent music venue documentary is what we're talking about. And the idea for the documentary, Phil, shows the importance of independent music venues. It came well before we knew what a coronavirus was, but the release of it, like smack bang in the middle, are probably the hardest time that any of these venues have ever had. How will these venues survive over the next few years? Should I be saying, will these venues survive over the next few years? Oh, I dearly hope that, that, that they do survive. Um, yeah, the thought that some venues will probably go, I mean, it's, it's horrible. I mean, you're losing community hubs there, as yeah. first off. But you're also losing um, the place where you kind of develop artists, where artists, as I was saying earlier, artists learn their craft. Um, so the idea that those venues will go, yeah, it's heartbreaking. I'm sure some will go, though. 
Yeah, absolutely. Some will definitely go all right. And when you say developing artists, etc., I mean, you two is what I would call, uh, sorry, UK's, um, what I would call very unfairly maybe, uh, the knee-jerk decision to withdraw from Europe. I mean, it's really now beginning to tell in the last while when people realise just how many work permits are going to be needed, just how costly it is, the amount yeah. of paperwork for equipment and that. And the failures in post-Brexit for music is going to be really heavy for UK back, uh, bands, no doubt about it. Is it fair to say, do you think, Phil, that this documentary is kind of like a national project, but with a local feel? Um. Yes, I think it's, that's, that's a good way of putting it. I think there's, um, it's the nature of the venues. You, you, they are very much rooted in their uh, local communities, but you see that replicated throughout the country. Um, and it is an amazing network to, to have there. Um, it is that kind of uh, national sense of, of actually having something that's so important to the local community, I guess. Well, everybody can get a look at it. Um, Phil Selway of Radiohead, thanks a million for being with us on the programme today. That documentary about independent music venues is called On the Road. It's available to stream online and you can head to independentvenueweek.com to find out more. So, obvious last question. In Rainbows, maybe 13, 14 years ago, then The King of Limbs, a moon-shaped pool about four or five years ago. Radiohead-wise, is anything happening? Have you been able to do anything, by the way? Have you been up to anything in lockdown besides this? Um... Music wise, no, it's not been possible. I mean, we we planned on taking time away from from it last year anyway, because you know we've all got um, we've all wanted to concentrate our own, on on our own projects. Yeah, there is um, a Radiohead project in the line. It's not a a, a record. Well, so it's it's not new music, and it's um, but there there is something which I think will be. You know, we're excited. About no, a Radiohead project in the line of stop music. Are you going to open a zoo? No, Ooh, let me think about this. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, um, do you know what? I'm, I'm so looking forward to the day when we can go back out and play. Yeah, yeah, play, I'm sure you are. Right. I mean, that's so much, it's such a joyous experience. I mean, doing the shows, last shows we did in Dublin, I remember that kind of real sense on that tour of, of, of actually just this kind of there was an outpouring of joy I, I don't think it's necessarily something that people have associated with radio ho- head shows in the past well if they were at that one they would i'll tell you it was fantastic yeah uh, kind of and uh, you know i'm so looking forward to being able to get back and all right well uh, we're, we're looking forward to seeing you here sometime very soon phil selway from radiohead phil thanks very much indeed and congratulations on on the road the documentary thanks thank a million you, phil good luck take care cheers bye, bye. bye. Dave Fanning, weekends on 2FM.